Good luck. This is again week 117 of the teaching ladder. And so we get to play against a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent and get to review the games afterward. Um, now I take each tournament game kind of seriously. So that's why I put the channel in emotes only mode. I know it's not the most friendly experience ever, but what can you do? Um, I take tournament games seriously, so. And we'll be back after the game to have whatever chat we want to have freely. Otherwise, folks are welcome to chat in, I don't know, my Discord, Shogi Harper's Discord, wherever you want to chat. That's cool. Uh, just not in a place, just not here where it could potentially arouse some suspicion, although it shouldn't. So here, I'm playing third file rook. Our opponent seems to be indicated fourth file rook. Maybe. Um, let's play third file rook. That looks fun. Now, if the king moves in some positions, then this pawn break becomes difficult to deal with with the king out here. Um, oh, usually it's the second player who is trying to get the first player to block this diagonal. But I've got my opponent to play this for us, so this bishop exchange doesn't happen unless they burn yet another move opening the diagonal. So I started the game up one tempo, and now I've gained another tempo by the fact that they've cut off this bishop exchange idea. And if they expose the bishop exchange, then I gain a third tempo. So that's kind of how I'm managing to attack quickly here. Now note, if I if they play like rook here, rook 4-2, uh, if I play pawn 7-4, pawn takes bishop 5-5, five, five, then silver 8-2 is possible, because this rook would support this silver. Whereas, if the rook moves over, say I move my king, they move their king, and then I do this bishop move and this pawn move and all that, then the silver can no longer block this diagonal, unless the king's also moved over yet, yet another time. So, yeah, this is already a tense position for my opponent. Um, I'd probably play rook 4-2 and then silver 8-2. But it's a free country. They can play what they want. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make a pun there. Um, just because we both have a red, white, and blue flag doesn't mean we're playing the same nation here. Alright, so this... Um, this puts some obstacle between the king and the corner. But it does protect against my pushing this pawn immediately. Whether it actually prevents me from doing that, I don't know. But um, I can take one move and try to secure my king slightly better here. And see if my opponent can indicate what it is that they're planning. Okay, they're moving the king to this side of the board. Um, I 
Man, I'm really wanting to do something impulsive, like try to break open this file. There's no need. Um... All right, so I defend again. I'm trying to get some indication as to where these pieces, these silvers and golds might be destined. Because there are so many ways you can move them. So I've moved my king more times than they have. They might, <laughs> might have some idea of bringing the bishop up and moving the king into left Anaguma or left king in the corner. Um, which I will attempt with this move to dissuade. So if they have any pretense about trying to dive into this, um, this might discourage them a bit. Because if we get to exchange bishops, and if this is hanging, and if somehow something over here hangs then things get complicated. As bishops could potentially exchange, I've not advanced the center pawn, although I could have considered moving it twice to try to get some sort of space advantage, but I don't want them to put their king in this corner. Another thing I could do to try to discourage that kind of castle would be to move this pawn twice, assuming that would be an option. Yeah, so our proverb, which we don't see just right now, but our proverb a second ago was, keep the foothold for the attack. What does that mean? Well, it means if you have some pieces attacking, don't exchange off your only attacking pieces. You want to have some way of continuing an attack once you've started it. Um... So this pawn-pawn tension might be considered some kind of a foothold. This pawn threatening to go forward is some kind of a foothold. Right now our opponent may be threatening to exchange bishops as some kind of foothold, I guess. I don't know. Not really. This is not stable the same way that a pawn exerting influence for a very long time might be considered stable. So, yeah, if I want another foothold, I might push this pawn. Um, I just played this out of discomfort that I've made a hole here. All right, so this is potentially a hole. This is still potentially loose. If I had a bishop, it would go right here. Can I get a bishop? <laughs> Wait, no, but then they would, like, move the rook over. My bishop's not going anywhere, and then this gold would hunt it down. So we can't yet get a bishop for that kind of purpose. But if this gold moves up, then you can bet we're going to try to get a bishop. So right now I'm going to try to see if they can push this. Okay, good. So yeah, we're not considering seriously tucking the king into this corner with all this tension that just mounted here. Um... So, I'm debating. I think I probably leave this shape. Last teaching ladder game, I tried moving this up. And while that would defend well against a frontal attack, here we do not have a frontal attack. So, playing a wider shape seems appropriate. Maybe last game, keeping the shape would have also been appropriate instead of trying to advance it. Uh, But yeah, this now we've hit the phase of the game where we're both trying to guess what each other... Uh, first of all, like if they harden the shape, what it might harden into. And second, if they start attacking somewhere, where might that attack be located? Um, 
So I'm keeping the silver and bishop connected for a while, but eventually if our opponent doesn't do much, I might disconnect them. Um, so this pawn blocks my bishop from escaping this way. Otherwise, we consider pushing this. But what else can I do? I could lift up the rook, move up the bishop, bring the knight out, and try to move the silver somewhere. That seems very slow. Um, I could push this pawn. It doesn't really aim at anything just yet. That doesn't seem right. Hmm. Oh, they stopped me yet again. So this rook can now move. So they don't need this rook opposing my rook. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know where I should try to claim space. I don't see this boat shape having an obvious weakness, although this can be the direction to attack from, but there's nothing obviously fragile about it. Well, am I going to do the same shape I did last game, just because I don't know what to do? Last game, one point came into clarity, and that's if you move both the gold and silver forward, expect to move this pawn. That way you don't have a knight drop ruining your day. Um, so maybe I push this first? But that doesn't make sense. It would be nice to use this file for an attack. Oh, I see. I could move this, bring the gold, move this, move the silver, bring the rook over, and the rook could aim at the king. That's a thought. So, how do we make that happen? All right, this makes room for a silver general. Whether or not this gold moves, the silver could move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's move it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they've played this really traditional shape here. Um, this looks interesting. Maybe I'm crazy. I'll scratch that. We know we're crazy, but, you know, we try to rein it in a bit. But yeah, the silver and bishop are exerting a ton of influence, even without the help of the rook. So the rook can do something over here, maybe. If they push here, we exchange. If the rook takes, I don't know.
Maybe this is stupid. Well, that's a free pawn. But there's no such thing as a free pawn in this world. Now, if we take that, they take here and then they win. They don't win the silver because it's, it's protected. All right, so what's going on? A lot is happening. Um, if I take here, we exchange. I'm looking for the bishop drop that ruins my day. It might... No, it's not that one. There's always one, but I just don't see it. I don't know, man. But yeah, if we let them take, and then stuff gets crazy, it gets very out of hand. If I take silver advances, I don't know. Oh, I should have... Rook 3-8, no. No, that's fine. I just don't know what to do. Well, I'm looking and looking and not coming up with anything, so let's play this. And then let's play that. And then see what it is that I've missed. Obviously, this is uncomfortable. But a pawn's a pawn. Maybe now they try to blast this open, but this might not be well-timed. It feels like maybe I should have something over here. Okay, I thought I had that covered. So my rook protects this square. My silver's got that. This is hanging. That's fine. Um, that's just a free bishop. Sorry. I think they're assuming I retreat my gold, um, but I don't. You can study openings a lot, but... Um... Yeah, it's the bishop and the rook are what make this game so confusing. Truly. If there were no rooks and there were no bishops, we'd still have some challenges with this. But given just like how rooks, once they invade, do ridiculous damage, and how bishops can weave in between all the other pieces pretty easily. It makes figuring out all these tactics so much harder than if there were no ricks and bishops. Oh yeah, and the, my king being exposed, and that may be being a fork, but not really. I had to figure that out, too. Um, so if I bring my gold back here, 
I can fight off against this Rook and Pawn. And yeah, I could use the Rook to fight and try to bring the castle back together, but then this... No, I have that covered. There's no reason to be so paranoid here. Uh, where do I want this Rook? I don't know. Do I want this gold floating a mile away from my king? Not really. Okay, so I break up my rook, so it's hanging now. But I can reconstruct my castle if desired. But I don't think there's a need to reconstruct it. Like, you only need to rebuild something if the opponent's got a strong attack coming. And here they don't. So I could bring up my gold. Oh, I can't move the silver sideways. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, move the gold up, silver over, gold up, and we just rebuilt the nice shape. Um, yet a file up the board. But um, that's not how that works. Okay. Right, so this is a focal point for attack. Um, I could use my gold to defend it. They can bring out a silver to continue an attack. Um, I could push this gold takes doesn't do anything. I could defend this and hit that. Interesting. Yes, this knight is threatening stuff, in case that's not clear. Um, bishop. Rook defends this pawn. Other bishop. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Do I have enough other bishop ideas for that to be worth it? I think so. Bishop, knight, gold. It's fine. Let's try this. This looks interesting. It occurs to me now that, like, they could just leave the rook here. <laughs> they don't have to worry about what I've done. I thought they had to worry because I'm attacking a rook. But then, like, a rook and a bishop are pretty similar in value. And this is already defended. <laughs> um, that's a slip of the mind. Yeah, so they don't need to worry about what I've done. <laughs> and worrying just creates further worry once I attack the rook again. So they could just leave it. Uh, if knight takes gold over pawn drop, gold retreats. I've not lost the game yet, but we're working on it. But yeah, so here attacking my bishop persuades me to move it. And now it's better than it's been. This bishop will do a great job defending my king. This rook, maybe not such a great job defending this king. Um, yeah, so let's sidestep the knight. Defend this point so we don't lose a piece. And now this knight's a target. Now, this pawn drop, if I had to take and move forward, would be a problem. But I don't have to take forward. I could just retreat and then... Well, I can't drop a pawn on the same square, can I? Only one piece can occupy a square at a time. Where's Quantum Shogi when you need it? 
<laughs> With like super position of pieces on squares, that'd be exciting. But yeah, this is a nice solid shape against an attack from the front. Um, and it controls the center quite well here too. Yeah, so I have to retreat. I'm not going to let this drop and lose my rook. But no pawn defends this. So yeah, they have a really nice foothold into my camp. Let's draw another proverb just for visual interest. What do we got? Against Mino Castle, use an edge attack. So originally I did play a shape pretty similar to Mino Castle. And an edge attack could be convincing against it. Oh, okay, so this square I've got defended. Um, hmm, our opponent has a pawn in hand. Um, they're looking to get more stuff in hand. I could drop a pawn to just say no. Um, I could drop it up here also to just say no. If they do knight takes, I have more attacking possibilities. Actually, I could drop it up here. Either... If the rook takes, uh, I don't know, man. Saying no is hard. I could drop it immediately up here. Rook takes, horse takes, silver takes, rook drop hits two pieces. But then they have a bishop. That's no fun. There's no consequence-free way for me to continue attacking. Um, yes, yeah, so the most compelling way to shut down this attack is pawn all the way down there. That's sad. My rook is never going to see the light of day this way, but I am up significant amount of material. So I don't see a need to jeopardize my fortune. Yeah, this knight and silver allow the rook to flexibly move about these ranks which otherwise my horse would be controlling. Mm -hmm. um, that is a way to spend a move. Oh, I found a chain of tactics here that's kind of interesting. Although maybe I found something better. Hmm. This looks interesting. Also potentially problematic. So if our opponent had a piece in hand, lots of tactics could result here. But they don't. 
But yeah, if this gold moves up, I have like bishop drops somewhere around here. I'm also considering using my other bishop on this diagonal. But then they can block that bishop. So I didn't want to drop this first. They block and then I came back and then this moves up. We're going to try this first. And if they find some way to deal with this threat, um, then deal with this attack in the corner. I don't need to drop a bishop to attack this, do I? Hmm. No. Bishop or horse here. Rook there. Pawn up. Pawn up. Hmm. I don't win a rook for nothing. Horse, rook, pawn. Pawn takes to Wait. Horse, rook. No, I can't go through the rook. Alright, this hits a rook and uh, the lance. Now you might ask, what am I doing? Maybe rightfully so. Because so many of my pieces are inactive here. I'm attacking. That's what I'm doing. Trying to break up their attack while attacking. So if the rook hits my horse, I can move it aside. And they could exchange here. Or I could just take here first. Taking here first has problems. Now if I take here, then I get a knight. Why would I not want a knight? I don't know. I don't want the knight. I want to take here twice. Then they block me and then I take the knight. Tactics are hard, man. This looks too interesting. I can't pass it up. They're confident. I'm sure they read this out. Yeah, I shouldn't blitz back immediately like that, because I'm in Bioyomi and they're not. But I'm feeling confident, so... That some way justifies my ridiculous behavior, right? They're in Bioyomi, they move quickly. So we'll play what I saw, which is that I get to break this in half. Okay, you want one bishop? You want two bishops? How many bishops do you want? Is two enough? I'd offer a third one if I could. I'm playing around here a bit with my words because... Uh, this attack is really severe. And gaining material is not going to quell my attack. Maybe this knight takes gold game as a surprise. But yeah, I'm finding a need, maybe for emotional reasons, to proceed aggressively here. So I could take this now for the cost of a knight, and then drop a rook here, and be attacking this and attacking this knight. 
That looks interesting. I could also retreat and try to collect the silver for free, but then they'll defend it, and then we exchange for it, but then they keep this intact. That doesn't seem right. So I continue attacking this way. They have two bishops and a knight to attack with. So this forks three pieces at once. This looks interesting. So I was willing to give up my bishop for, um, well, I exchanged a bishop and a knight for a gold and a silver and this fork. So that's not winning material. I gave up a little bit of material for this position. But it's got to be worth it, even with my rook doing absolute nonsense back here. Even with my silver out of play, like... This tactic hit seems reasonable to me. Now, do I take the silver? It's a free silver. Why would I not take it? If I have a better attack, I would not take it. Oh, actually, they are going to do this bishop fork. So it's not a free silver. It's a free silver that I'd have to retreat my rook afterward to try to keep. Now that's it, if I don't do anything, they're still going to try to win this. This is sharper than I expected. So yeah, here, if somehow they manage to take there for free, then they'd also be hitting the other rook. So some degree of calculations required here. I could block this with my rook, or I could take this pawn. If I take the pawn, this square is going to become very weak. Now if I try to block at the rook, knight drop. I don't know, man. This looks weird. The bit about pieces promoting when they retreat makes this game kind of strange, tactically. So... Yeah, now if pieces start exchanging, this rook can actually defend against a potential rook-rook fork with the bishop. If they drop a knight to try to hit this, the rook could go to a lot of places, including just retreating backward diagonally. If they use a pawn, then maybe, I don't know. No, retreating might not be circumspect in that. Interesting. Um, well, my everything is loose. What do I do? We 
we say no to the bishop by blocking it. And hopefully this offers further chances somehow, some win, somewhere. But yeah, aggressively blocking bishops as high up as possible works about the same as it works with rooks. Although bishops have an easier time weaving about the board than a rook might. So... Gold takes is very tempting. Dragon takes has to be correct, even after this knight drop, this fork. Oh, that's check. Knight drop take, bishop takes. Uh, uh, dragon takes doesn't look right anymore. All right. We'll leave the dragon where it is and break up the rest of my shape. So, virtually all of my pieces are hanging here. The only solidness in this position is this gold dragon chain. Sanjubyo. I've got two pawns in hand. It's not nothing, so I could consider a pawn drop up here. Earlier we saw Proverb keep the foothold for the attack. So dropping a pawn here would prevent me from having a different pawn attack. Okay, this is trying to lure me into some kind of fork here. Um... Do I allow it? Do I encourage it? Maybe. This knight's not doing much here. Knight up. Pawn drop. Knight's got nowhere to go. Um, I'm impatient. One solution for my impatience would be to lash out and have some fun. Alright. Oh, I walked into the fork after having pointed it out and said, no, that's not a good idea to encourage. Here we are. <laughs> I've encouraged it. Oops. Yeah, on the other hand, this would commit their knight to a square where they don't want it. So, I'm still surviving this, but yuck. Um, on the other other hand, you know, getting this gold out of the way, allowing my rook to move to the center file, etc. could help. There could be benefits to that. Stand the knight drop is... Oh, never mind, it's not happening. Or rather, they're not dropping here, which would prevent them from dropping there. Um, yeah, so the obvious attack is on this diagonal. We all see that they want to do something there.
30秒。Well, we might give the opponent what they wish for yet again. Because we're just that、nice、guy.、Mm. Here. I have another pawn. I don't. Need my pieces to win this game. <laughs> uh, man. Leaving this diagonal wide open. Now, note, I still have the possibility of a pawn drop 5 5, so this isn't as scary as it looks, but.、Um, yeah, I, I'm playing aggressively here. Okay, I'm going to show one iota of common sense and like not leave this diagonal open forever. That's my iota of common sense. But yeah, now hopefully I'll show some initiative and whether that means pushing this pawn twice or dropping a silver here or dropping a silver there or something. Like, I keep reading and reading, and none of these tactics are quite working. So that's why I keep delaying and delaying. But yeah, I could move this gold over, this rook over, that would be an idea. There's stuff I can do. Just need to find time to do it. Okay. So, I did remark earlier I have pawn 5 5. I don't know if pawn 5 5 is right, though. It looks right. Pawn 5 5, knight drop, and I do something to defend this.、Uh, or I just attack. Yeah, now, now we're talking. Yeah, pawns do well fighting against bishops as long as you support the pawns. So now, if knight drop, gold drop,、um, if they take here, I'd get a free bishop. So, I, don't, I guess they could drop a pawn to attack this again.、Um, then I could again drop a gold, and I'm forking the pawn and the gold. Or rather, the pawn and the bishop.、Um, Whoa, that's unfortunately not the right move. I don't know what. Well, I mean, this prepares a fork.、Um, that's one thing it does.、Um, 
That's interesting, but I don't think it's quite good enough. All right, I'm going to attack this bishop against my better judgment that maybe I should be attacking the king more directly somehow. But um, this wins a free tempo and protects against a potential fork and maybe lets the silver, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just absolutely not worth pursuing this, but my dragon was doing nothing here. It might do something here. Um, but yeah, I was really, really wanting to push on this file. And my opponent somehow talked me out of it. Okay. I accept your proposal. Thanks for the game. Yeah, sharp stuff. Anything can happen, right? Um, so, yeah. Joy about this is that after playing against each opponent, then we get a chance to look at the game together. Uh, starting from the beginning, when our opponent, at least I recommend the beginning, Hidechi and I recommend you take at least some look at the entire game. Cool. Yeah, that was quite an exciting time. Uh, Alright, my opponent would prefer that I direct our post-game discussion. We could do that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> curious what our opponent has to say already. Uh, so, um, can I think? Wait. Oh, I played this. So I think you could play like this as an option. Um, yeah, uh, assume your concern is something like this, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not a mind reader unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to encourage, uh, and I see, like, why the website, especially for higher-rated players, uh, favors giving control of the analysis to the lower-rated player, because they're the ones... Or, I'm sorry, this is the player who lost the game. They're the ones who often have questions and would like to do airing of the grievances or whatever. They'd like to be able to say, hey, what was that? Show me what you were thinking. Um, so, if frequently they have some questions. Um, it's hard for the victor to know what all the questions are of the player who did not win. Uh, so, yeah, something like this.
Yeah. So, um, yeah, if we were to go something like this, I, uh, so if this something like this happens, um, it gets tricky. Uh, trying to click this piece. So instead of moving the king, just move this directly, and that's defended. Um, this holds the square. So if you choose to play like this, um, yeah, this is just something to be aware of. Um, Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, we can go back to it. Oh. Oh, a king rook fork. Ah, uh, interesting. I'm not exactly sure where. Um... Yeah, not quite. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is too loose. So maybe I should just delay this one turn. And then try it. There's just a ton to think about, and I don't know everything, unfortunately. It would be nice if we knew everything, wouldn't it? It would make the game so much easier. But, um... Yeah. Anyway, this is possible. Um... Yeah. Yeah. 
This did get sharp. So I'm trying to threaten something like that and this. Um, but maybe not right away. Um, yeah, so say they pass here. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. It's possible you could take this way too. Yeah, so he raised a good point that, um, yeah. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Oh, uh, that's interesting. I forgot that was a thing. And you'd hope that having the initiative would mean something here, but I don't see how it does. Well, maybe we take here anyway. So, we take, 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 I guess. That's such a hot mess. What an incredibly hot mess. Uh, wait, and this is a fork. Yeah, so... I guess backing up. But it's possible I missed something. Yeah, there is that. Yeah, so eventually that check will come into play. So that makes sense. Yeah, so this bishop drop doesn't quite save the day. Um... So he mentions that this is the reason why he elected to close the diagonal here. Like, where was it? Here. Yeah, this sort of thing. Yeah, it's a good reason. Um...
Yeah, this is good. I was actually a bit annoyed just how good a shape that was. Um, uh, this is where they learned it. Yeah, it's a very good shape. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tower Mino is pretty solid, except when it's not. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, they misread this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually curious. Find a good move. <laughs> Show me something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. This looks nice. Uh, yeah, this is one of two moves. Um, hadn't really figured this out. I assumed I was just going to play this, but I don't know. It was kind of a mess. Um, and the idea I had was something like this, and I don't know. I drop all the way back, and then this. Or maybe I don't drop back there, but maybe I drop back here and then cycle back. And I've got the pawn in hand. Um, So I think both moves are interesting, but I don't know. So yeah, if um, if I fail to capture that pawn, then I've given them a pawn in hand, and yeah, their attack takes multiple turns to conduct. But if I do take it, then um, that speeds up their attack. Mm-hmm. 
so they actually have a really really solid castle shape so a little aggression might be warranted um Uh, silver, 5-4. Silver, 5-4 looks great. Uh, this pawn pushed 7-4 might be great. Maybe not. I don't know. Um. Yeah, so I'd probably push this here, but... Uh, sure. Yeah. Um. Oops, my bad. Cool. So yeah. Ah. Uh. Yeah, this really stings a lot. Yes, they were expecting this. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I actually saw this at, during the game and panicked a little bit, because I'm like, wait, I didn't foresee this possibility. What's going on here? Although here I might be fine too, maybe, maybe not. Um, we've had worse, but this is not great on my part. Um. Yeah, so there's the sideways rook that's just a huge thorn here. I guess also... Mm, yeah, no, the sideways rook just is the champion of the day in this position. Um, I can't seem to find any other refutation. Hmm. Yeah, so, um, maybe I should have played this here, yeah, and then threaten this and that and this, and this might have gone smoother, and then like something like this, I don't know. There's ideas. Taking a pawn with the bishop. Oh. Yeah, each tempo is worth something. So, losing tempi can be pretty destructive. Um, yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, they're right that um, they're able to fight pretty well here. Uh, hmm. Maybe I should take this. I don't know. Yeah, this would have been interesting. This could have been so fun. And then like here, here, this, this sort of thing. This would have been so fun. Why did I chicken out of this? I don't know. Or actually, maybe I'm threatening this way. Oh, yeah. Stuff like this. Hmm. Yeah, right. Interesting. Um... Hmm. It's so, so difficult to defend this position. Um, that's part of what makes it fun. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit challenging to predict what might happen. And in fact, like I could take here too, but uh, yeah, I should have tried this. This would have been fun. I went back this way. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder what's going on here. Maybe that. Maybe not. Who can say? Um, yeah, this looks difficult. Oh, I just don't know. Um, That night attack uh, gives me so much to think about. Uh, yeah, this is just stuff. And, um, yeah. Uh,. Despite the position being lost, they're still fighting hard, but it's such a difficult fight to make. Um, maybe I take here. And then, like this. I don't know. 
Um, So I considered stuff like this. Um, just could not figure this out. Maybe something's going on here. I just don't know. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I couldn't figure it out. At least not in the time situation afforded in the game. Um, oh, maybe this. Yes, yeah, so I considered all these other pawn drops, but not this one. Um... That would have been cool. It's so hard for them to defend this and deal with the rooks, they can't really take that. And since they can't really take it, like, what do they do now? So, this is probably the convincing thing I'm missing. And then we spend more time, like, activate the pieces um, and this should be pretty straightforward from here yeah I actually don't mind completely handing over control to uh, it's usually better if the player who didn't win can lead the analysis, if they can. Yeah, maybe I got carried away. <laughs> I don't know. I was so happy with this position. Well, um... Hmm. Let's see, I'm trying to remember my thoughts. Um, how do we get here? Silver, knight drop, king retreats. Knight takes, oh, so here I would get a gold for a knight and have to find another attacking move. That looks much safer than the game. Um, is there some way I can easily continue to attack here? Because I'm not seeing it. Yeah, taking the knight is probably the sanest approach here. Yeah, and so here I've collected a gold and collected a knight. Um, yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure if they have no attack. Uh, 
maybe this if we're desperate. But, um... I don't think we're that hard up just yet. Oh, maybe this anyway. Hmm. Um... Hmm. There should be something somewhere, but I'm just not seeing it. Maybe this. It looks a bit crazy, but maybe something like this is useful. Yeah, so, yeah, I do think that, um, oh, whoops, sorry. So, yeah, here, uh, the Silver Retreat, uh, Whereas in the game, um, I don't know for sure, but I think my attacking chances were excellent here. And it's quite a difficult position. And our opponent did the best they could to stir up confusion, but I think that's... Um, I don't really see a way they could have played this better from here. They just had a very, very difficult hand at this point, and couldn't... I don't think they could have saved it. Um... Night, day, I don't know. Yeah. It's cool. Yep. So, another game in our teaching ladder this weekend. Another exciting finish. I was proud of myself. Because here... Where was it? Here. They attacked my bishop. And I could have continued running away and come up with something eventually, but I played something sharp and was managing to break up their castle, although, as my opponent points out, they had a chance to reconstruct it immediately. Um, but I kind of expected this would happen, and I was satisfied with this outcome. So, yeah, I think this exchanging my bishop and knight for two generals, I think was worth it here even though generally you would not want to throw in a knight for free in that deal. Here, this knight and lance are... Here, this rook's still not doing anything. So this... Even though I was proud of myself, like, why should I be? Yeah, and then I found this, and I was proud of myself for this too. Um, during the game, I was considering, do I just take this and then take the rook? But then, like, things get messy, right? Um, but maybe I'm just hallucinating a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Like, having my horse in defense here is quite nice. Um, 
I don't know why I so eager, eagerly exchanged it. My bishop drop looked cool, but you know, if I'd tried something a bit different during the game, I was trying to figure this out, did not find it to my liking. I could not find a way to make this to my liking, but maybe there is some way to make it work. If not, one should question then um, this retreat. Because like the whole motivation was to try to get a position to my liking, and that's definitely not what happened here. Um, I wanted an attack. So, yeah, other thing I'd considered here, and during the game I said I looked at it and then didn't like it, was this possibility. Um, but I think this is just a reflection that I can't get everything. I'm reminded of some child from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory who wants the world all at once. And that's just not how this game works. You get some things, you don't get other things. That's just how this game works. Um, so if I could now go here. During the game I remarked they like move the gold up or move the silver up. I don't actually... I assume gold up is safer so this doesn't drop. But, you know, if I'd read this a bit deeper... And maybe we'd have found something, right? So, this could have been simpler, no? Nothing defends this. After I'd made my move in the game, I'd started looking at things like this and realized, well, but no, they could defend this with a bishop. But it just feels like things are falling apart here. You see, layer by layer, this slowly collapses. And I think I have chances, although all my army are loose here. So, like, maybe this isn't the right way. Maybe both are wrong. Maybe this is well motivated, but then trying to collect the knight immediately is still bad. Um... Uh, the bad thing about this bishop drop is it does contain my rook. So, like, if I stay true to first principles and just don't get rattled by the position at all, this is a move to activate my rook. This takes one extra turn, so I'd have to push this and then push... They exchange, of course, but if they retreat, I have to keep pushing the pawn until it gets out of the way. But there's nothing they can do. They have no counterplay here. So this would have been a sane way for me to continue. That, like, they can try to resist my rook, sure. Um, but then we get free stuff, and then we go back and collect this. And so, like, being ever so slightly more patient would have made this whole endgame easier than it ended up being. I would have got stuff for free, get my rook active. I'm not sure the rook would have done a whole ton, but this pawn is doing a great job fencing in these pieces. This rook isn't really doing much. Um, but yeah, if I just try to activate my rook... I mean, what's my opponent going to do? If I gave them extra time, it's not like they can push this and then drop a pawn right there. And they can't drop one and then drop another because they don't have a third one to drop. So that can't happen. If I play this, they could consider something like this, but I'm better on this front as well. Um, they could consider something like this. And maybe I'm not prepared for every possible attack. Maybe there is stuff that breaks up my shave somewhere, but I don't know where. But, um, yeah, this retreat, while motivated by some notion of defense and some notion of offense, it's just not correct. Maybe better is this. 
even though this is risky. And if they take, then this lands. I don't know. Or maybe we drop another bishop instead. I'm going to try to open some lines, get the king caught in some snare. Um, but again, they have just enough pieces to block my pieces. And I don't have enough pawns to smash this open by force. Um, yeah, so just activating my rook probably would have been the sanest course of action and led to a much simpler endgame that doesn't rely on so many tactics. Uh, that said, yeah, they used the rook to try to hold this together. If they tried this instead, then yeah, I have this, so that doesn't work. So yeah, this does force their hand. Twice it forces their hand, and then I take here instead of taking the pawn. But my rook never sees the light of day. Yeah, so they should probably reconstruct this, but then this is... Uh, maybe I played it right. Maybe all this is correct on my part. And there just might not be some defense that holds this. Um, oh, they could do that. That's the thing I missed. Okay. So here I'd have exchanged my bishop for a rook. Uh, where the rook wasn't doing a whole ton on its own. And now my bishop can't... Oh no, I got the rook. I was about to remark how if I had a bishop, what would a bishop do here? But no, I got a rook. So, um, yeah, it's not so easy. This is still a pretty strong shape. So this is what I missed. And to avoid stuff like this, I should instead um, activate my rook. Simple, straightforward stuff and recognize that my king is safe and that once I've activated the rook eventually I can remove this and activate my silver too. Uh, it's gonna take an eternity but this is a solid shape and this shape is not solid and like let's say ooh, I want to try to make this all solid just in a single move. Um, okay then what? So now I've played a thing they're going to play something, and I just don't have an easy attack here because they've got this foothold already. I can't easily remove it. It's a mess. And so I can try to play this pawn up, right? But then they say no, and so this is why I think activating the rook first before this is advanced. Um, this might be my best chance, because now they don't have time to play both moves at once. And so, yeah, there's only so much they can do to resist this. And sure, they're going to fight. Um, and maybe I even walk into a fork here, and maybe that's not the end of the universe, because, like... They have stuff hanging, too. But, um, yeah, a lot of things to consider this game. They played in a really nice, solid shape. They have also extended this into my castle, so I might have messed up earlier. Oh, when did I push this pawn? When did I push this? Oh, they pushed first. Okay, and I took... And I said I had to take. And maybe I didn't. Maybe I did. I don't know. I don't know how to figure this out either, whether or not capturing is mandatory. Or maybe I should just play this. I don't know. This seems dangerous, because even though I've got its head defended, like, is this defense really going to hold? Does the knight really do anything here? Why would I put the knight there? Well, to try to just stop this move in the first place, but I failed at that. So, 
Yeah, if I'd just been a lot more patient, prevented this from advancing for free, then I could play this out and then try to find something here. I'll have to look again at it sometime. There's a lot to consider. I hope we've enjoyed this game, this analysis. And yeah, I look forward to future future teaching ladder games.